Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. People often ask me, how do we go from the rules or tricks or other things in music theory to actually writing a chord progression that makes sense? Let me show you exactly that. We're going to take a less known trick in music theory and we're going to build up a chord progression. The trick we're going to take is every third inversion seventh chord resolves to a first inversion chord with a root a fifth below. Ouch! Sounds complex, eh? Well, honestly, it's really not that complex. What is a third inversion seventh chord? Well, take any seventh chord. I'm going to take a G7 right now, okay? A third inversion chord is a chord where the seventh is at the base. So the G7 chord is G, B, D, F. The seventh is F. And I'm just going to play the G chord with the F at the base. That's a third inversion G7 chord, resolves, like we're saying, to a first inversion chord with the root a fifth below. Well, let's start with the root a fifth below. A fifth below the G, we have C, so it resolves to a C chord. A C chord in first inversion, which is simply a C chord with the third at the base, so the E at the base. So, this. Notice how the bass note of the first chord goes down stepwise to the bass note of the second chord. So that's the rule we take today. How do we make a chord progression with that? Well, one way to make chord progressions with these kind of rules is to start chaining those rules one after another. How do we do that? Well, let's do it this way. Let's say we are in the key of G and let's start with the tonic chord, G major which I'm going to play in this position here. Now, if we want to leverage on the rule we've seen before, we need to find a third inversion chord. There are many possible ways of doing that, but what I want to do right now is I want to hold the bass of G, this G note at the bass, I want to hold it there. And I want to find a third inversion chord that has this G at the bass. It's not so hard. A third inversion chord will have the seventh at the bass, so G is our seventh. Now, what is a seventh chord in the key of G that has G as the seventh? And if you think about it for a moment or you consult your chord tables, you're going to find that this chord is going to be A minor seventh. So after this G, I want to play an A minor seventh and I'm going to play it this way. You may notice I'm not playing the full complete chords. I mean, I'm playing only the root and the third for G major, and I'm playing the seventh, the root and the third for this A minor seventh in third inversion. And I'm doing that because one, it sounds better to me to use less notes for those things. And second, so you have less notes to worry about. And third, because it's much easier to play on the guitar. But pretty much on all the chords we're going to see in this progression, we're going to eliminate the fifth. We got the G chord and this A minor seventh in third inversion. And we kept the bass there, which... It's very pleasing to the ear. Now we have the third inversion chord, which resolves to a first inversion chord with the root a fifth below. Good. So A minor 7, a fifth down from the A, we get the D with the third at the base, which is F sharp. So it's this. So it sounds this way so far. G, A minor 7, D major. So far so good, right? How do we move forward for that? Well, I don't have to necessarily move forward. I could go back to G, so it will sound this way. It sounds perfectly good, so I don't really need to move forward. After all, if you think about this in terms of a functional analysis, I'm playing a one, two, five, one. So it's the standard 2-5-1 that we see in jazz or in several other kinds of music. And I just rediscovered by forcing myself to use the third inversion chord resolution. On the other hand, another thing I could do is to move forward. So I was on this D chord in first inversion. Now let's keep the F sharp fixed and let's find a third inversion chord. So the F sharp will stay there, and I need to find a 
chord in G major that has F sharp as the seventh, and this chord is G itself, only G major seven with the seventh at the bass. And this will be a third inversion chord. It's a third inversion major seventh chord, but still it's a third inversion chord. We resolve this following the rules. From G, go down a fifth and find a C, and then I have to play a C in first inversion, which is a C with a bass of E. And again, the C chord is in the key of G, so we are fine. So if I play what I have so far, it sounds this way. Which sounds very pleasing to my ears, and I hope it's the same for you. Now, I just keep using the same trick. I hold the bass, find a third inversion chord, and resolve this down following the rules. I can keep doing this and go on forever with this. And so on and so forth. I can go on and on and on and on. On the other hand, you notice that if I do this too many times, it gets a bit old. So at a certain point, I want to stop. When do you stop? It's completely up to your own taste. You can stop very soon, like we're doing at the beginning, and just call it a day. Or you can go on and go a bit further. And I'm gonna go on a little bit further here and arrive maybe here. And now I'm on a G in first inversion. And then I'm just playing another inversion of the two, five, one, only with everything in root position, just to end the progression. I could have done this before, I could have done this later. Again, you can stop the chain of progressions anytime you want, any moment you want. So you see, I took one of those mysterious and abstract music theory rules and I just found a way to make a chord progression out of it. It is simple as that, guys. Now, if you're asking why I was holding the bass, it's simply because I like the sound. And holding the bass, it's an easy way to get into a dissonant chord. It's kind of one of those tricks you pick up on the way. If you hold the bass, then you can switch to a dissonant chord, and it seems to work every single time. So, just by putting these together with the original rule, we were able to create a chord progression, and you can make this chord progression as long as you want or as short as you want, and it seems to work every time. This is just a simple example, guys. Don't get to hang up on the details, and if you are thinking, but could you have done it in a different way? Yes, I could have done in a thousand other different ways. That's the point. If right now you are thinking, Tommaso, why didn't you do this instead? Well, try and do it, because it's probably another good way of using this rule to create a chord progression. And if no idea comes to mind, don't worry. I can still help you. You see, the important thing here is to learn all those things from scratch. This video is really not a beginner video. If you're watching this and thinking, mm, some of the stuff I'm missing, no problem. It's because you were missing some of the basics and you haven't learned them yet. If you were able to follow completely, great for you too. In both cases, I can help you by recommending to you guys my course Complete Chord Mastery, where I clarify everything about chords and harmony on guitar. We see all the little details, we put all of them together and we see how to write those chord progressions. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is 
Tommaso Zilio of music 3 for guitar.com and until next time, enjoy! <laughs>